Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today's video is going to be about motorcycles. All right, guys, so usually when I do vlogs, I end up doing just a kind of general update. I let you know what I'm doing, whether I'm buying motorcycles, shopping for motorcycles, you know, just having a bad week, talking about my psoriasis, whatever. And I'm trying to transition over to moto vlogs. Now, I've done this twice for you guys, and both attempts have failed miserably. So what I'm gonna do today is just talk about the options that I had before actually buying the new motorcycle that I revealed last week. Well, I, I teased it, I didn't fully reveal it. And so the video that I actually posted prior to that where I was shopping for motorcycles, basically it was, I had three options. So there was the 2020 Yamaha Bolt, basically the standard Bolt. Uh, I believe it's very similar to the R-Spec. Um, the 2017 SCR 950, which is uh, Yamaha's scrambler version of the Yamaha Bolt. And the third option was the 2015 C-Spec, which is the Yamaha Bolt uh, Cafe Racer edition. Now, the... C-SPAC was made, provided a, the internet has told me correctly, it was made from 2015 to 16, and then in 17 they came out with the Scrambler, not necessarily as a replacement, but it kind of took over, and the Scrambler was only made for one year. Now, depending on where you're looking online, it does say 17 and 18, so I believe it may have still been released in 2018 in other markets other than Canada. Now, the Yamaha Bolt, it's not something that I'm unfamiliar with. When I went to the Toronto Bike Show, probably three years ago now, prior to the pandemic, I actually saw a Yamaha Bolt, and at that time, I was still looking for bikes, and my dad and I went, and we were looking at bikes, and so it was something that I saw and I actually really liked it. And so that would have been back around 2018, somewhere around there. So th those models, the brand new models would have just been like a standard bolt. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the engine size would have been, probably still the 950. Maybe there might've been another option uh, that I'm not familiar with. Now, like I said, those three bikes that I was looking at, you know, it's it's not something I was unfamiliar with. I just, because I work at a Harley dealer, I never really considered the Japanese cruisers, even though I own a DRZ. So it wasn't that I didn't want another Japanese bike. I just thought if I want, you know, a, a big V-twin, I have to buy Harley, and so I was a little bit biased in my search because, you know, I would just got, I guess I was fanboying a little bit, you know, of the the XR750, you know, that type of styling, and so I really wanted a Harley because I work at a Harley, but when it came down to it, I I finally realized that the Harley was going to be too much on insurance and for the age and the price, the initial cost, and then the work that I would have to do to it, all of this stuff, just, I took all of these things into consideration before actually looking at Yamaha and Suzuki doesn't really have what I want. I mean, they do have a V-twin, which is really nice. It's in their SV650, 
Sounds amazing with an exhaust on it, even just a, a slip-on, not, not a full exhaust. But it wasn't big enough. It wasn't that kind of flat track styling or anything like that. And so, realistically, I just thought, okay, well, if I have a DRZ, if I'm going to upgrade one day, it's going to be to a V-Strom. So I'll leave that avenue alone for now, and I will just focus on the V-Twin, you know, something a little bit more powerful, kind of a, a cruiser, scrambler, mix, whatever, to get my flat tracker that I really, really want. So here was the problem, though. With the Yamaha Bolt, when I went to Burlington Cycle and I sat on the cruiser, it felt really comfortable. I loved the bars on it. It was all blacked out, and I really liked the styling on it. However, I'm not a big fan of just kind of relaxing cruisers because I, I would rather be a little bit more elevated. And so what I would prefer is to have something where it's, I guess, safer. You know, like you want to have visibility. You want to be able to, you know, be aware, right? You want to be able to look and be up. You want to be elevated so you can see over uh, cars and whatever, right? So that one was also a, a, a little bit out of my price range as well. And so I thought, okay, I, I do like certain elements, so I was keeping those things logged. So basically, that one was almost written off immediately. However, the two bikes that were remaining were the 2017 SCR 950 and the 2015 C-Spec, which is the Cafe Racer. So Scrambler, Cafe Racer, head-to-head. -head. And I'm thinking, okay, this should be... Well, <laughs> I thought it was going to be easy, but it wasn't. It was a very, very difficult decision to make. And the reason for that is I had this very similar... Uh, feeling with the seat and the foot peg position was really nice. The handlebars were more upright in the scrambler. And so I, I sat on it and I thought, this is actually, you know, really nice. The foot pegs, unfortunately, do bite you in the shins. Um, but other than that, I mean, it did seem like 75, 80% of exactly what I wanted to due to a Harley anyway. So I thought, okay, maybe this is what I'll end up going with. And so I ended up test riding one at another dealer and that experience, it, it, it was very exciting. However, they had a different air breather on it. It was digging into my knee. And so I was, I ha I was getting some information on, you know, things that people were complaining about on the internet. But then when I was riding it, I thought, this isn't really a complaint. You know, the, the stock breather, an aftermarket one, actually made it worse. And so I was a little bit deterred from that. But the color is kind of what I wanted. However, I, went, I was at this other dealership and I thought, well, maybe I don't need the Scrambler. Maybe I'll just get the Cease pack. And the seat spec, the seat is perfect. The seat, the, the foot pegs, everything just, because the foot pegs actually had rubber on them. And so I was really excited for the seat spec. However, the price was a little high, so I started shopping online. And I actually found a cheaper one. And the only thing that I would have to do was change the handlebars because my back isn't the greatest. Sometimes I have, you know, back problems that kind of comes and goes and if I'm working out obviously I'm going to feel better than if I'm not working out then I'm going to have a sore back so if I'm in shape it wouldn't be a wouldn't have been a problem however just due to lifestyle and I'm not always able to work out and focus on my back to strengthen it I thought okay maybe I shouldn't get this bike unless I'm definitely changing the handlebars so I started shopping around and I found a really, well, really cheap option and it's hold. 
I was waiting, I don't know, a few days, you know, because it was a long weekend. And I, when I went to call them, it had already sold. So unfortunately, I missed out on that one, which brought me back to the, well, comparing them, the, the scrambler to the C-Spec at Burlington Cycle, it was uh, overpriced C-Spec compared to what I could have bought and the scrambler which was a little bit over my budget anyway but it was brand new nobody had touched it and it was completely stock so it was a blank canvas i could do whatever i wanted to it and so ultimately i thought okay i can't afford the c-spec unless you know i start borrowing money or something or get a loan whatever right and so I was so torn in making my decision because I wasn't a fan of the red, but it had a lot of positives, right? I really liked the C-Spec because the seat was perfect. It had a cafe uh, tail section. I'll post a photo for you guys so you can see. But that tail section was just, to me, perfect. It was like if you, if you combined all three of the bikes, you'd have like this perfect setup with you know, the, the black um, aesthetics from the Yamaha Bolt, the standard model, moved over to the C-Spec, but then you would want, like, spoked wheels, and so it was, oh, it was, it was such a long process. It took me two weeks to actually make my decision, and judging by the teaser videos, you guys know exactly what bike I bought, but it was such a tough decision because, you know, you you have to choose between, you know, the, the different seat, the different foot pegs, the different bars, you know, the different ride height, and price did play a, a bit of a part in it because I was already over the budget that I wanted to spend. However, Going back to me looking at a Harley, a Harley that is approximately 10, 15 years old would have cost me roughly four or five grand. Plus, I would have had to have put two to three grand minimum into that bike. And that's if I could get it for four or five grand. So I would have been spending upwards of like 8,000. Meanwhile, I could get a brand new Yamaha for the same price or less. And so when you guys are looking at brands, don't don't be like me, don't be biased just because you work there. You know, look look at your other options and you know, at the end of the day, it's not a simple decision. I mean, like I said, I was tormented for 2 weeks. 2 weeks. It took me to actually figure out what I wanted, you know, did I want did I want uh, a certain color of, uh, of a bike? Did I want a certain styling? So that's just my experience of having to choose between those three bikes. Like I said, the Yamaha Bolt, the standard model, was written off right away because it was a 2020. Price was ridiculous, for me anyway. And I'm not saying that it's a ridiculous price for someone else if they're looking for a brand new bike. But for me, it was just ridiculous for me to think that I could afford it. So I said, no, price is not the, not good. It's not the right bike for me. So even with two options, left and right, blue pill, red pill, right? It was still such a difficult decision. And provided the weather is a little bit better, I am going to do a full proper reveal for you guys of the bike that I chose. And so... Hopefully you guys like this video. This is just kind of me trying to do a moto vlog, trying to transition over because it is a summer. So I am gonna be doing a lot more videos related to motorcycles. So if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you guys have any comments or questions, leave them down below, you know, let me know how I did. Um, if you guys want any more information on how I, you know, chose you know, which bike to go with, 
um, anything of that nature, leave it down below. You guys know where the comment box is. And um, if you guys like this content and you want to see more, or you finally want to see the bike reveal, which fingers crossed again, the weather is better and the recording goes better, I will have that next week or the following week for you guys. So if you subscribe, you'll get notified when that finally comes out. And I will see you guys in the next one.